everyone and welcome to Soul Talks. As I informed you, we have a very special guest with us and we'll be doing the introduction very soon. So the topic for today's session is mental health of men. We'll be talking a lot about it and learning so much. How are you, sir, today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Very well. So we have Dr. Charan Teja uh, Fogatia. He is a very renowned neuro uh, neuropsychiatrist from Hyderabad and from his vast experience in the field of mental health, we'll be able to learn so much from you today. Thank you so much for being a part. So, shall we start the session? Of course. Okay. So, my first question to you, do you feel sometimes patriarchy do affect your life? Mm, at every step, for sure. Starting from the childhood to even today, uh, personally and professionally, of course it does affect it does affect my life. It does affect the women in women around me also. Their life as well. Okay. So why do uh, why do men uh, restrain getting mental health care? What do you think? Why is that? Ki it's easier for women to go out and take mental health care. Why is it so difficult for men to do that? I think firstly, women or men generally mental health awareness is quite less, especially in a country like ours, right? Right. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, in my practice, why I see a lot of men have difficulty opening up, obviously, first thing is conditioning, you know, conditioning for years together, where I'm sure you heard of man up, man up is always equal to tough enough, right? It's a, it's even used for women, right? They say, come on, man up. So, I mean, there's a general pressure as it is to begin with on men that you're supposed to be strong, um, um, you're supposed to be the breadwinner of the family. You're supposed to be the leader of the society. And there yeah. are different different things. Like, so I think just the conditioning itself, where we think that, you know, we are, we are superheroes and not prone to having mental health condition, that is not true at all. And after growing up also for you to, I think, to seek mental health support, firstly, mm, I think two points where you're scared would be uh, unemployment. You, you feel that, uh, you know, because a lot of my patients who come to me, they still tell me that, doctor, I want you to write that, you know, I need I need uh, rest from the work without mentioning I have a mental health condition because they're scared of losing employment. And um, a lot of these people happen to be the traditional breadwinners of the family. So it gets difficult. So they can't afford to um, have, you know, unemployed life. That's one thing. And the second thing is relationship failure. I don't think so. The relations will fail because you have a mental health condition. But I think in, in their head, they, they feel like, oh, if I tell that, you know, I have I have depression or I have I have a particular mental health condition to my partner, maybe the chances of my partner looking at me with respect might go down. So we'll have issues, we might separate. I think a lot of stigma around that. So I think these are two areas. I think relationship and unemployment are two main uh, risk factors, I think, for men to open up. On top of it, there is a classic conditioning, you know, how um, um, men are supposed to be okay, they're supposed to uh, self-control, self-regulate, take care of themselves and not really sit and talk about how you're feeling all the time. Not even cry, simple thing as crying, right? Forget about talking to someone else. You feel emotional. If you cry also, it's looked down as very effeminate behavior, right? Which is not socially acceptable. Um yeah. So obviously, you know, men men do find it a lot, lot of self-induced pressure to like not acknowledge what they're feeling or not even go and get help. Right. And I think the society has already put in so much pressure on men about the fact that you need to be strong, you need to do that, you need to do this. And just to make them strong and this pressure about them, they're not able to express basically what you, you said all the time. And relations with them and everything get affected. So we're talking so much about mental health. One thing that I have in mind and I really want to know that from you is what do you take do to take care of your mental health? Mm, on a daily basis, I do like a lot of things to take care of my mental health. Especially as psychiatrists, you know, there's a lot of emotional burden when you're talking to the patients. Um, especially most, I work in an urban setup. So most of the patients I do see are somebody who is coming with life stressors. Right. Um, so when, when they talk to me, when they talk about abuse and they talk about uh, financial burden and relationship issues, general difficulties of life, it does get to you, of course. So I think um, I, I talk to a lot of creative hobbies. Um, like a typical man, I don't go and play uh, basketball and football. 
like I go and paint, I go and do photography, I do pottery. Um, you know, I do I do a lot of creative things. You know, those keep me uh, yeah. those keep me uh, happy. And also, you know, I do talk to my friends. You know, I do have friendships in my life where both men and women we do sit and have conversations about you know, how how we are feeling. Also, because I think most of the doctors, I think, you know, we we tend to open up to each other more than like I, I for me, I think it's difficult to go and get consultation from a psychiatrist. Considering I'm a doctor myself, so I think it's easier for me to talk to my other other doctor friends that you know how oh, this happened, but you know how do people expect us to behave like this? So there is went out for me. I think also being brought up in an urban family, um, the pressure of society, um, you know, in metrosexual males is a little more less. I feel compared to the ones who come from conservative backgrounds. So in that way, you know, I do I do try to balance my work and life to 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 an extent. So moving on, do you think mental in our society mental health stigma is related to men is way too much and it's a big mental health issue? Do you think that is increasing mental health issues, the stigma around men's mental health, the pressure that men cannot have any mental health disorder? Is it creating some mental health issues for them? Um, I don't think so. I mean, like, um, so see, mental health. When we say mental health issues, there are two things. One is just mental health issue. Another is the mental health disorders. Now, disorders do come from neurobiology of the brain and, you know, chemical imbalances and genetic regulation. So that's not going to change based upon, you know, societal pressure and things like that. Yeah, they might trigger them a little more, but they won't cause. Whereas if you're talking about mental health issues that are not disorders, are general, general day-to-day difficulties, yeah, that can be increased by the stigma for sure. But stigma won't cause a disease. Like, oh, because I'm in a stigmatized environment, I won't have a schizophrenia or I won't have bipolar disorder. That, that won't happen. Right. Yeah. So is the lack of adequate attention paid to male's mental health a public health problem, a, a society problem, or a combination of both? Mm, I think it's a combination of both. Um, I mean, I don't see much difference between like public public health problem and society because I, I think I, in a country like ours, I think both 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 coexist together, right? Society and public health. Yes. So I think it's a combination of both, I would say, for us. Yeah. So moving on. So as we all know, when it comes to mental health, there's a lack of awareness in our society, not only when it comes to men's mental health, about a lot of other factors also include even for women. We do say they're allowed to have mental health issues, but we do stigmatize them a lot. What is your take on that? Mm. See, I mean, uh, I feel like uh, things are changing, you know. I mean, pandemic, uh, if, I, if I see one bright side of the pandemic, I mean, I shouldn't be saying there's a bright side to the pandemic, but if I have to be really super optimistic and say that, oh, like Dr. Chairman, what's the bright side of the pandemic? I feel like, people have understood what exactly is mental health. A lot of people actually come and tell me that, okay, you know, I've been in an abusive relationship. I'm realizing it now. I've been in a toxic work environment. I've been realizing it now. I've been feeling depressed. I've been realizing it now. I've been feeling anxious. Uh, I feel like me and my, my husband are not doing well. I feel like uh, me and my children, we don't have much uh, uh, relationship anymore. All these realizations did come in the pandemic. I feel like pandemic came in the right time about, you know, how people are able to realize that, oh, there's something called like mental health. Mental health is not mental like the show in movies, right? So, like, it's not that. Mental health is just emotional health, your psychological health, and your gen- general well-being of how you are feeling, how you're able to think, how you're act- acting, how you're behaving. All of this, is it normal, not normal? Do I need help? Can I self-regulate? I think all these discussions are happening a lot with pandemic. I feel like we're definitely in much better time. Um, if you ask me this question, like before pandemic, I would have said that, yeah, mental health awareness is completely like very bad. Also, I think with a lot of psychiatrists and therapists now on, on social media uh, portals, I think we are actively doing our bit to you know educate. But I, my, my only fear is, is it, is it enough or is it reaching where it's supposed to reach? If I'm, doing an, if, you're, if I'm doing a live, it's being watched by somebody like you who already are slightly aware of like mental health is. But it's not watched by those people in the village, uh, uh, you know, maybe with not speaking in the vernacular language. So if it's reaching masses, that's when I think, you know, it's like a, it's either a commercial movie or is it an art movie? 
commercial movie will get the entire india's applause if it's an artsy movie only the urban population is seeing so mental health awareness i feel like should be like commercial movie <laughs> right so moving on so like have you ever in your own lifetime experience have you ever felt a little anxious or depressed and you felt that there's no need to show it to the people the society and the people around you have you ever felt like that a little anxious yeah. or depressed I mean, little anxious and depressed. I mean, we do feel on a day-to-day basis. I mean, I'm little anxious if the patient, when they came back, the patient has recovered or not, or if I get a call from an ICU, like you know, I'll be little anxious to know if that, if I'm, if everything okay with my patient on a day-to-day basis. I am, but I did have mental health issue growing up. You know, I had clinical depression when I was, I think, in a teenage, early teenage, and I come from a family of doctors, so fortunate enough that you know. Um, i was taken to a psychiatrist and i did, did, did take treatment for a year medical treatment and i got him better so yeah. uh, so for me like i don't understand the whole oh, like mental health issues it's it's more like oh, oh i had covid i had depression so for me it's the same yeah but i think things aren't always like that when it comes to like a flu or a covid it's so easy oh i just got a flu and it's got covid or things like that But when it comes to mental health, I've never seen somebody just openly, oh, I had depression or oh, I'm I had anxiety. It's just not like that. People is like, किसी को बताना नहीं है. You need to keep it to your hidden side view. That's wrong. I think we as a society has put so much pressure on people around us that they're never been able to open up about the fact that oh, I have something. And I think you were so courageous about the fact when you were telling the story. And I think people should be like that only. It's yeah. normal. I think your family made it so normal for you. that is like we should openly talk about it is that the thing yeah i mean that is the case one thing and another thing is i feel like um, see sharing about your illness is a very personal choice I, it shouldn't be guided regulated by oh if it's a mental illness or a physical illness right yeah. it really do i want to share it or do i want not want to share it that privacy is is that you have a right to do so but you shouldn't hide it because it's a mental health issue like you know yeah um, yeah, yeah i mean yeah definitely coming from a educated family definitely helped but i you know when i discuss this with my friends who also come from like medical background and doctors families they say that but uh hey sharing but it's not necessarily same for everybody you know a lot of doctor families also are very hushish about this to an extent where they don't want to even get them treated yeah yeah so so i think i, I just got lucky with my family it's not just the medical family or not yeah, yeah but so- I think, yeah I, but, but also i think if we do health education to family members for example let's just say that um you know you must be you know, you're a young young woman you know right now you are understanding what mental you know health is and tomorrow when you when you grow up like a decade or two decades later when you have children when they're going through mental health condition you will be that parent who will be telling them that i think this is an issue we need to get it sorted right i feel like our, our next generation is going to do much better with in terms of mental um, mental health conditions yeah and i think dr sharan as a fact that you are a doctor yourself and you've been seeing so many patients day by day do you feel this stigma and the fact that they don't tell their families there any case that you ever felt, uh, had in the, your experiences that the patient didn't wanted to accept the fact the person has something that did that ever happen yeah i mean not any time at like any case not every day this is a everyday thing where uh, my consultations become longer just because i'm convincing them that this is an illness which is quite treatment right this is not a phase of your life or this is not bad karma or this is not your past sins coming off to you or this is not bad character right yeah. this is not any of that it's a illness and i explain them how brain functions and you know how blood flow oxygen all this plays a role in your behavior so right. most of them goes into this yeah stigma does uh, guide uh, a lot of people to not see a doctor um, so a lot of people go and see other other specialists they're okay for example if they have anxiety they go to cardiologist Right. right they uh, likewise you know for different reasons they go to different doctors so i think there is a stigma in with seeing a i would i wouldn't say just psychiatrist but except in that mental health condition yeah do you think uh, it's more difficult to convince the family rather than the patient sometimes because the, the moment the patient might agree to the fact that oh, i have this but family comes up also in fact oh hamare bachche ko ho nahi sakta are you sure and then does that ever happen Yeah, it does happen again, like on almost every second day, maybe. Uh, where, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens. It happens where uh, sometimes family members only bring the, 
you know, bring the patient to me and they tell that the moment I'm about to write medication, they tell that, you know, doctor, like, can you do something else, not medications? Yeah. I tell them, um, um, see, I mean, this particular stage where you are in, you need medications. If it's something milder, I would refer, definitely refer to your therapist. But right now, maybe you can also go see therapist, but you should take medication. The moment you say that medication, the moment you ask about genetic influence, because we tend to ask, I always tell them that I do think that maybe there is an undiagnosed uh, psychiatric, uh, some related condition in your family. They say, no, 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 no. Our family is uh, healthy, is <laughs> very good. There's no way, oh, he nahi sakta, you know, that kind. Then I tell them that back in the day, a um, lot of people don't even know what ha heart attack was, right? Yeah. They feel like, oh, this person passed away in the sleep. Nobody passes away in the sleep. That must be because of cardiac arrest. So same way, a lot of conditions might not have been diagnosed back in the day because of no advanced science back then. So maybe you you don't know, I try to convince and they take it very personally offensive that, you know, I said that, or not just the patient, but somebody of you also have a psychiatric condition. But yeah, I do educate and when they go out of my OPD, they're, they're well informed and they're happy. So I think that works fine. Yeah, I think... Uh... I think a good doctor and a good psychiatrist who's explaining the things and everything and can make the case a little better, I think, if you have somebody to guide you at that tough time. Then... Yeah. yeah, I think more than good, I think the assertive one like me, I'm very assertive. Like I have you, if you, I ask them, did you understand what I said? They say, no, no, it, I didn't understand doctor, it's okay, but then you you are the boss, write the medication. I tell no, I'm not going to write the medication. Yeah. Ask me questions, what do you not understand? I think more than good, somebody who's assertive and very uh, very firm, I think, can can teach a little better, I feel. I can understand. But I think for somebody who doesn't have much knowledge about the field that you are in, I think then the person will consider you the boss that you know the best part for you. You only really manage the fact. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> okay. Shall we move on to the next question? First. Yeah. Okay. So as we all know, he mental health is stigma, mental health is biggest taboo and everything. And we as a society is trying to overcome it. And uh, the new coming generation is way better than the older one when it comes to talking about their mental health. It's slightly easier for them. But what would you tell the people who are not from the, this Gen Z or the current generation, the older generation, they still have a huge uh, stigma when it comes to mental health. Any advice or anything that you would like to say to them so that they can also come out of the taboo around mental health? I think firstly, don't watch movies that are projecting mental health in a bad light and don't get your information from there. I think uh, when I talk about this commercial movies, projecting mental health in a bad light, like, you know, in sense of either humor or, or, or a tragedy. You know, mental health is always you know, something a uh, butt of all the jokes or it's a tragedy or mystery or a horror thriller that genre right instead of that i think uh, you know um, media and communication should really not dramatize mental health illness uh, neither dramatize not trivialize show them how it's supposed to be shown because okay. not all depression will have some major trauma in the past for example like i had no trauma when i had depression it was like i woke up and i was not interested in doing things I was not able to concentrate on my studies. I was not able to sleep well. I started having headaches, body pains, a lot of different things. So I didn't have any trauma to go back the door. Like for people to sympathize with me that, oh my God, you know, what a poor child had. So don't dramatize, you know, health conditions need attention, not drama. So I think uh, education is very important. Right amount of education is important. And second is open conversations. Uh, anything, any taboo in a society will only come down when you educate a person and convince a person not argue fight and make fun of her, fun of them for example like i see a lot of people making these reels that are uh, that are slightly i think uh, disrespectful to the people who don't have knowledge about mental health conditions right right i mean i don't i don't i don't i don't believe in that because they don't know when they don't know you are supposed to teach them not like make fun of them for not knowing the moment you start making fun of them, they 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 become more resistant to understanding what you're saying. So I think right amount of education uh, is very important. Open conversations are important. I think schools can change a lot of things for us. The schools being such a prime um, influence on our uh, on our upbringing, right? Uh, to, to appoint parents after that, it's all school. I think schools should have active mental health campaigns, not just for one day. 
But generally, I think they should encourage more conversation. They should do role play, skits, etc. Even in villages, I'm I'm talking about even in rural setup and semi-rural setups and all those also. I think that will probably reduce the taboo. But I think, for example, see, I mean, everybody is doing a campaign about Mukesh ad before you watch a movie about smoking. A lot of people do know about cancer and smoking, right? Yeah. Same way. Why can't why can't the government do an ad about uh, mental like common mental health conditions? Like let's just say. Um, let's just say maybe depression. Let's just say maybe uh, anxiety disorders or OCD or something. Common ones that it's yeah. some some awareness about. It. Yeah, I yeah. think that there's a lot should be done when it comes to the fundamental rights as well. We have a right uh, for healthcare, but when it comes to mental health, I don't know. All of the insurance companies don't don't cover the session the mental health part of it. I think partially they do, but not the entire part of it. No, partially also they don't do. But I think uh, from October end, I think uh, they the. There's a new yeah. According to that, if you're admitted to the hospital, you're liable to uh, take. Um, yeah, no, but, but once it comes into effect, is when we can believe this. Like I don't believe till it comes into effect, <laughs> not on the paper, but like in action. Yeah, like yeah, I get it. So, anything that you think, any rights or anything that needs to be there in the constitution when it comes to mental health, do you think we, are we as a country require that? Oh, there are many rights. There are already rights there in the book. <laughs> but yeah, the real world. Yeah, no, no, but they're not. They're not following them. All the rights yeah. are beautifully written. There is simple right of right to protect the dignity of mentally handicapped. Right. Uh, it's not done. I mean, if you've seen uh, kids with. Uh, uh you know low intelligence and you know down syndrome etc like that where is the where is where is dignity for it when i tell the family members that come from like you know maybe a poorer social economic status to go to a government set up get an iq assessment by by a psychologist and go apply for pension they say that we tried that before doctor and you know they they make us roam so much that you know we don't care about, about it anymore so i think that's not dignity right dignity lies in how you are receptive and how you are sensitive to these issues and you actually help there is national uh, disability uh, program you know I, i don't know how much of they're doing they're doing what i'm saying is do it with little more uh, integrity so there are so many rights already there but i think uh, to implement that and to check if there is implementation going on or not properly is important i think this applies to all rights in india not just mental health but one right i really hoped for was insurance uh, policy covering it because lot of patients when i ask to get admitted for a couple of days they say that they can't afford an insurance doesn't cover it's yeah. very sad it's very sad uh, to know that right so i think that's it's it's good that they are they are trying to make some changes and let's see how far it goes and also i think government should allocate more budget to our health absolutely more towards this. yeah health budget is like really bad yeah thank you so much dr tarun it was such an insightful chat so and i learned so much i hope our audience did too and thank you so much for being a part of our event thank you please take care